Global Cup at the industry is a new league. Uh, under this league, there is a Global Cup logistics, the Global Cup at, at work. This is really industry inspired scenario. We, as Global Cup Federation, work closely with industry to set up this industry inspired scenarios and invite the Global Cup community to work very closely with industry partners. So this is a real scenario, real problem, and hopefully the research conducted in the Robot Cup community eventually can benefit more industry. For example, uh, there is Robot Cup Logistic League, there is Robot Cup at Work League, all focus on this industry needed. And we also hope eventually more and more industry partners can work closely with our Robot Cup community to address the industry needs to leverage the research results, the research outcome generated from our Robot Cup community. So in fact, uh, both of these leagues uh, are kind of standard platform leagues already, although not officially called so. Because in Robot Cup at work, the KUKA U-Board is uh, the platform everyone uses. And in the Logistics League, uh, the Festo platform, Robotinho, is uh, the one everyone uses. We have three different tasks, essentially. One is the uh, navigation task, that is uh, basically the robot has to navigate in the arena while avoiding obstacles, uh, dynamic obstacles and so on. And uh, another task is the manipulation task, in which the robot has to recognize and localize the objects and grasp them and pick them on another, on another shelf. And the most complex task is the transportation task in which the robot has to navigate, recognize objects, pick them, navigate, place them in the... And these, these are essentially the the tasks that we do in this uh, competition. In my opinion, the, the object localization, recognition and localization is the most challenging aspect uh, because uh, these kind of objects are very difficult to recognize and uh, localize because of their shape, particular shape, because these are industrial objects, so are textured less. So it's, uh, 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 for us, it's very difficult, this part, but uh, we, can, <laughs> we can solve the heat. Well, in RoboCup at work, we are using a scaled-down version of a real factory environment. You have conveyor belts, you have places where you have to pick objects, you have places where you have to place them. You can assemble things and you can also mount things. And this is a scaled-down version of a real factory environment, real factory problems, and this is why we are appreciating the work that is being done at RoboCup at Work so much. What I think is very important with RoboCup at Work that we closely collaborate with academia to set up these challenges that are really relevant for industry. Robots have to carry and transport objects, they have to pick and place objects in the factory of the future. And in the factory of the future, systems will be mobile with manipulators and it's important to get used the students to these kind of challenges so that they can work later as an engineer in these uh, factories. And the robots that we present here are tackling exactly this problem. So the idea there is that the robots take work pieces from machine to machine and at each machine the product is refined until you can finally deliver it. And the challenge here is particular focused on the task planning and reasoning aspects. So what should the robots do? When should they do it? And also coordination so that robots don't interfere with each other and they have an effective distribution of the workload over the whole world fleet. There are a bunch of cameras spread across the robot. One is here that is used to recognize the markers on the machines. Another one is here that we use to recognize the light signal is on, is on the machine for uh, the detection of the state of the machine. There's another one here that we can use for precise alignment by detecting the conveyor belt in the image. Uh, the gripper is then used to retrieve and put work pieces from and to uh, the stations uh, that we have. Um, there's a computer inside the base, but that alone is not enough to drive everything. So we have an additional laptop on top 
that allows us to have more elaborate sensor processing or reasoning processes. The basic uh, robot platform in this league is uh, the uh, U-Bots. It's like when you're seeing the other teams, you basically saw the same robot. That's not uh, because the league is stick to this kind of robot. It's just because this is the st one standard platform. It's nice to use and it's easy to use. You are allowed to build your own robot, but it's quite hard to invent a whole robot system. So it's easier to just take some money in your hand and you, you have a basic platform, which is uh, nearly OK. Yeah, normally the robot has no camera or any kind of uh, detection system. So uh, this year we are uh, using Intel Recent's uh, camera uh, on the robot and uh, it's a death camera with a time of flight death camera. So we have uh, 3D uh, information about what we are seeing. So we get the positions of each color point, whereas uh, it would differ in the face of the position of the camera. So we can then calculate where it is in the world of the robot, so we exactly know where the objects are. The gripper we get from uh, from another team as a present. We uh, we saw uh, the team with the gripper, and the standard gripper is really really bad for the leak um, because it can just open up to two centimeters. You have objects that are uh, wide as this or wider and even smaller, and if you uh, can just uh, differ in two centimeters, you're not able to grip both. So uh, you, you need to have another solution. And we saw this solution on the other team just asking them and say, yeah, we have some uh, parts left, so here you can have it. And then we just build it together and uh, they helped us with the communication and so we, we can just use it. That are um, so-called mechanum wheels. Uh, they are for omnidirectional driving, so you can uh, move in any direction. You can turn on the rotating, just uh, straving right, left and moving and it's uh, working with, uh, with these roles. What is interesting about robotics is you can um, think about how when you try to, up, uh, when you try to um, imitate human behaviours and everything, you're actually doing something about it as well. Like you, you can make an improvement or make a discovery and at the same time you, you discover and you learn um, more in depth about what we do. For example, you don't really think much about how you how you take something, like when you want to grab something. But when you are doing this, you realize that you have to think, how would I do it, and how would I make the robot do it? Um, I've been in Robocop for 13 years now, and I've seen it how much it has evolved from like many many years ago. And what I think is. Whether we like it or not, robots are going to be a major part of our future life. And my question to those who want to join Robocop or are thinking whether we should join Robocop or not is, do you want to sit and see the future or do you want to be part of it? So in the future, I would like to see a scenario where we actually connect to Robocop at home and you have a user in the home environment ordering some kind of item over the internet, yeah, like... Uh, uh, electronic shopping, and then you would see some manufacturing process or assembly process going on in RoboCup at work. And uh, logistics could help to uh, integrate several of these things to, to illustrate how a, a final product is built out of components. And uh, we could even integrate uh, new challenges in the future to do the actual picking and warehouse logistics. And eventually a parcel is packed, which is delivered to the user in the home environment. This would be really great to have uh, as a long-term vision for these leaks.